The fight between Tony Ferguson and Donald Cowboy Cerrone isn't the main event of UFC 238, but it is probably the most anticipated fight of the night. Indeed, it might be the most anticipated fight of the year so far. It is a guaranteed whirlwind of violence. And as is the theme of the night, the fight figures to be a title eliminator at 155 pounds, with the winner ostensibly next in line for a fight with the winner of the summit meeting between Khabib and Dustin Poirier. Only some shrewd maneuvering by Conor McGregor or some kind of radically unforeseen circumstance could derail that logical progression. Load up on guns, Kurt Cobain once sang. The music of Nirvana captured the ethos of a generation, and in the same way, the opening lyric of Smells Like Teen Spirit captures the essence of what's intriguing about this fight. What else can you say to convey the shared talent for violence of two men with a combined total of 18 post-fight bonuses? Much has been made about Ferguson's winning streak. That that streak stands at 11 consecutive victories is remarkable. Fighting in the UFC is about as hazardous as playing Russian roulette with a half-loaded revolver. So, with that in mind, coming out unscathed 11 times in a row is remarkable. But what makes his winning ledger even more unbelievable is the overall quality of those opponents. Since October 2013, Tony has carved up the best fighters at 155 pounds, like Ulysses Grant slicing his way through the heart of the Confederacy in the dying days of the American Civil War. I remember when Tyron Woodley was a guest on the Joe Rogan podcast. He and Joe were talking about the state of the lightweight division when young Jamie brought up Tony's record and Woodley rattled through the winds out loud. Wow, said Woodley, as he listed off only the finishes. KO, stoppage, choke, KO, choke, 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 TKO. Surprise and awe colored his voice as he listed off the wins, while Rogan looked on with upraised eyebrows. Yeah, said Rogan. Woodley was still welterweight champ at the time, and it was fascinating to hear a trained killer at the pinnacle of his sport so clearly caught up in the appreciation of the work of another fighter. Those 11 wins include two victories over former UFC champions and a third win over Josh Thompson, himself a previous strike force champion. It also includes finishes over Edson Barboza, Abel Trujillo, and Gleison Tebow. And if you weren't keeping track, Barboza, Trujillo, and Tebow all lasted the distance with our current champ, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Find me a fighter with more clutch than Tony Ferguson. That's an open challenge. It has been persistence and competitive instinct as much as hard work and talent that led him to where he is now. That persistence saw him survive a flush head kick from Lando Venata. It kept him going through Pettis' lethal second-round ambush, and it allowed him to march down RDA with a grin on his face while fighting a mile and a half above sea level. The persistence was there while Tony was frozen out of a title shot he'd earned several times over when a celebrity champion decided to move up and wait and cut to the front of the line. And it was most recently there when he came back after his knee was destroyed in a freak accident on the eve of the biggest fight of his life. So, call that clutch, call it a winner's mindset, or just call it old-fashioned cojones. Whatever it is, he needs that steel inside his soul now more than ever before, because times have been tough for El Kukui. After forcing Anthony Pettis to capitulate last October, Tony collapsed in the ring and dissolved into tears of relief. That release was a glimpse into the emotional turmoil bubbling on the inside. And earlier this year, there were revelations about the state of Tony's mental health that made the news. Those revelations included stories of extreme alcohol abuse, delusions, and hallucinations. It was reported that the police had been summoned to his residence multiple times out of fear for his own safety and the safety of his wife and young son. 
Most chilling of all were the accounts of Ferguson at times walking around in a stupor, awake for days on end, while other times falling prey to manic episodes where he became seized with an infernal paranoia. Fortunately, Tony appears to be on the mend. He was quick to seek help. His wife and his team have remained at his side, and even his rivals, Khabib and Connor, have tweeted their well wishes. Although all seems well, anyone who has had a friend or family face mental illness understands the difficulty and complexity of the situation. Mixing head kicks with psychotherapy makes one of the world's hardest jobs doubly difficult. As much as Ferguson's resume is a topic of conversation going into this bout, Cowboy's resume is just as good, if not better. It's not an exact comparison, because on one hand, Tony stands out because he's had so many consecutive victories against tough guys, and also, Tony convincingly beat RDA, and RDA has two resounding wins over Cowboy. But even with all the losses and the downturns Cowboy has had in his career, his list of victories is outstanding. Consider that he avenged two of his early career losses by beating Ben Henderson and Jamie Varner. He also submitted a young Danny Castillo, and he iced Charles Oliveira really, really quickly. And I think the fact that he beat Oliveira so badly was a big reason why Oliveira decided to take that poorly thought out drop to 145 pounds. Cowboy also head kicked guys like John McDessie, Rick Story, and Matt Brown. He submitted guys like Alex Oliveira, Mike Perry, and Dennis Seaver. And he's shown he can outpoint guys just as well. Ask Miles Jury, or more recently, Ally Quinta. Much has been made of Cowboy's status as a new father. The man himself has talked a great deal about how becoming a parent at a relatively late age has changed his perspective on life, as well as his approach to his profession. Dad Cerrone has kind of become a meme, a sort of legendary Pokemon on the MMA forums, alongside other mythical beasts like TRT Vitor, Motivated BJ Penn, or C-Level Kane. But Dad Cerrone might be the best one of all. F. Scott Fitzgerald said there are no second acts in American life, but if that's true, how do you explain Cowboy's late career trajectory? Before the arrival of his son, Jackson Danger, he was on a devastating skid, having lost four out of his last five, including a pair of bad knockouts. But now, with his infant son in his entourage, he's enjoyed a career high, courtesy of a three-fight winning streak. It isn't hard to connect the dots on why Cowboy has begun to excel recently. The man has rarely lost a fight strictly based on skill. He's a sublime striker with a bloodthirsty submission game. It's always been a mental issue, by his own admission. Cowboy has been strikingly candid about his career-long struggle with pre-fight jitters, as well as his difficulty with an inner voice that's always telling him he's not good enough, or that he'll never be good enough. During this late career rebound, he has also expressed a primal shift wrought by the arrival of his son. It's all the usual lines about how he feels like he's fighting for something bigger than himself or his own ambitions. It's the sort of thing we've heard from a million other guys over the years. I'm fighting to feed my kids, blah, blah, blah. But with Cowboy... It really seems true. It seems like this change has been kismet. TRT Vitor and Sea level Kane are fun memes to bandy about on the internet, but Dad Cerrone is actually something genuinely noble. Dad Cerrone is an affirmation of the fact that it's never too late for a person to shed their flaws and grow into what they were meant to become. On the surface, this fight is a confrontation between the two toughest contenders in the most stacked division in the UFC. It's a clash of styles, with Tony's boxing and outrageous risk-taking pitted against Cowboy's calculated kickboxing and stoic demeanor. 
It's 155 pounds of firecrackers, guaranteed to go off in a jaw-dropping display of kicks, punches, sweeps, scrambles, and submissions over the course of 15 minutes or less. But below the surface, there is a story being written, a story more profound than is the case in most fights. You have Tony fighting for the title he's deserved for years, and Donald fighting for a second chance at the crown second chance he never thought he'd have. You have two men struggling to fight off the worst elements of their nature. One man grimly coping with the stigma of mental illness, while the other finds previously unimagined inspiration in a new family.